Um, I actually uh, have class right now, and so I'm missing class in order to be here, uh, but it's not a problem because of technology. So let's just, I want to take a look at this here. This is uh, my Moodle web page for Honors Comp Sci 1. Um, actually, uh, at least one parent has a student in this class right now that's being uh, loosely supervised, but they're in high school, it's okay. So, and, and this allows me a place where I can put stuff related to my course. And you see, one of the things that I have here is recorded lectures, because I've been uh, recording lectures in the class. Um, but, you know, I'm not there today. Not a problem, I just stopped in uh, earlier and recorded this uh, lecture. And so they're actually, as we're going, doing our thing right here, they're actually upstairs uh, watching this lecture right now. At the meeting, so you get the lecture. Okay, so I let them know that I'm here at the PACA meeting. Actually, I stopped by in person to let them know that <laughs> um, before I, I came down here. So now, now this thing, this thing that we're doing here, this online thing about putting stuff here, I'm going to say this morning that it needs five things to go well. For this to happen well, we need five things. The first thing is we need a, a spiffy laptop with spiffy software. Now, spiffy is a technical term, so I want to you know, explain what that means. I actually tried to record lectures, uh, I don't know, maybe it was three or four years ago, to record lectures, you know, and make them available to students. And um, I, I didn't have a laptop with a webcam in the lid, and so, you know, you try to check one out in the library, but they're taken, so I brought in my own video camera, and I set it up in the back of the room. I didn't have spiffy software, that was screen capture software that would capture what was on my laptop lid and be projected, so it was hard to see, then we had compression issues. And I, I'm, a, I'm a tech guy, okay, I admit that. And I'm pretty savvy, and I finally figured out the workflow. And when I got done, I said, you know what? This isn't worth it. It's not worth it, it's too much work. But now, I have this laptop. I walk into my classroom, I set it down, I open up the lid, I hit, I have a shortcut, but anyway. I hit my shortcut, and then I start doing my thing. When I get done, I save and upload to Moodle, okay? It, it is so much easier now because we have modern technology. We have spiffy laptops and spiffy software. So that's the first thing you need to do it well. The second thing that you need in order for this to go well is you need an overhead projector, one of these things right here. Because, uh, and now I admit, okay, classes at Academy are small, but even if you have 11 kids or 12 kids, like I have in one of my comp sci classes, to have all of us huddled around looking at my laptop lid doesn't do anybody any good, right? It needs to be projected up here. So that's the second thing, you need an overhead projector. The third thing is you need a smart board. Because when I'm teaching and I'm doing stuff, I can be down here, but um, I know your kids, all right? And when I'm down behind my laptop, their mind is out there rather than on me. And so I need a smart board up here, because when I'm teaching, and then I'm at the front of the room, and you know, I'm making sure eye contact, eye contact, come on, we're right here circling things, pointing out things. You know, doing all the things that we need to do rather than huddled behind my laptop lid. Okay? And so now I can come to the thank you that I want to say. I have yet to work on a projector smart board unit on campus, and I'm a roamer for one of the classes I teach. I don't teach in the comp sci lab, I teach calculus roaming around to different classrooms. And I have yet to teach on one of these combinations where the funds have not been provided by PACA. And so it is the work that you guys are doing out there coming to meetings like this, doing planning, doing you know all the things that you do to support the school. And you just saw a report here where it says, oh look, we purchased all these smart boards. We purchased these overhead projectors. That's enabling this stuff to go well. And so for that, I say thank you. Thank you for the efforts that you're doing there. Now I said it actually takes five things. We talked about the spiffy computer with laptop, the overhead projector, the smart board, and we'll save the others to the end, okay? So just, just hang on, we'll, we'll get there. So we're gonna start, see if we can do, ah, uh, glimpses into Vision 2015. Okay, um, I think uh, as Sean mentioned, the board asked the technology team to come up with a vision for technology, and uh, what has emerged from that process is a vision that's larger than just technology. I have a quote in my room about computer science, but I'm going to trade it out here a little. Vision 2015 is no more about technology than astronomy is about telescopes. Now, you need telescopes to do astronomy, okay? But if you're in the business of being an astronomer, 
you may or may not have a fundamental love for telescopes. You need them, you need, it's an important tool, okay? But technology is just the tool for the business that we're about here. We're about educating students, okay? And technology is a tool for that. Vision 2015 has to do with our pedagogical practice and how we go about educating students. So we, we know that, that technology changes rapidly in the world. Um, uh, I remember as a child, I would uh, sit in my father's car and he had a, a mobile phone. I don't know if you guys remember these mobile phones. It was installed into the car, it's about the size of a small suitcase. It had a, a, like a coax cable going out the back <laughs> window. I, I know you guys remember that. Um, and then, of course, the phones got smaller, more people had them. So now, you know, we have a whole slew of our students that walk around with. Well, it used to be cell phones, right? But they're not really cell phones anymore. Now they're, you know, uh, web-enabled mobile devices. So they have at their fingertips access to just about the sum total of knowledge that's available on the internet. And so technology changes rapidly. And because of that, our lives change. Our lives are different now because of technology. For better, for worse, they're different. And, and so we need to adjust to that. So that's what Vision 2015 is about, is looking at how technology is changing and how it's changing pedagogical practice. So today, with, uh, with this, with you guys, I want to consider four questions. First of all, we want to look at the broader direction of education. What's the direction that education is going? Then we're going to take a look at what online content looks like. Because when I say online content, uh, many of you probably have had some experience with online content, and that we probably think differently about that. So I, I want to say, when I use the phrase online content, what am I thinking about? And I'm going to draw a distinction between online content and an online learning environment. Because those are really two different things. So we'll take a look at what that looks like. And then, of course, we kind of answer the question, what does this mean for academy in light of what we have just learned? So uh, let's get started. What is the direction of education? Um, this is a, probably the most cited stat uh, right now um, is, is here. And and you can look at the graph whether you like a log log graph or not, you know, pick your own uh, personal preference there. But if, you probably can't read the small print, but what this says here is this is a curved projection for high school students, grades 9 through 12, and the number of courses, the percent of the courses that they take, which are online courses. And it's currently projected that by 2019, 50% of all courses that high school students take in America will be online, okay? 50% by 2019. Now, we know something about projections, right? They're wrong. That's not going to be 50%. We just don't know which way it's wrong. Is it going to be 80% or is it going to be 30%? But I, I don't really care about the exact percent. What I'm looking here is for the overall trend. What is the trend? And the trend is going online. But we have to ask ourselves, does that really matter to us, right? Does it matter to us? It really only matters if when you move a course online, you know, if it's better. Is it better? Many of you have probably had an online learning experience, and it might have been online done poorly. You know, it really wasn't very good, okay? Um, so is there online done well? Is it better? Well, we're not the only ones who wonder that. The Department of Education also wondered that exact same question. And so what the Department of Education did is they did what's called a meta-analysis. And in a meta-analysis, you say, okay, what we're gonna do is uh, other people are doing research in this area. We're gonna gather together every research paper that compares online learning to face-to-face -face instruction. Every research paper we can find, we're gonna read them all and we're gonna analyze all of them to see is there a trend. Because maybe one piece of research points one way, one piece of research points the other, but when we pull all the research together, what do we see? So the Department of Education did this, and they came out with a report, um, which is a summary of this research. Uh, that report is 94 pages long, so if you have a free evening, it's a, it's a great read. Um, but, uh, but if you don't have a, a time to read all 94 pages, there is a two-page executive summary of the 94-page summary of all the research, which is right about uh, my speed. Um, however, I'm only going to show you one sentence out of that two-page. Uh, uh, executive summary. And this is what they found. They said the meta-analysis found that, on average, students in online learning conditions perform better than those receiving face-to-face -face instruction. 